Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our third of our transfer videos. Uh, we're discussing Bournemouth today. We have Tony to come in and join us on the couch today. Thanks very much for coming in, Tony. Cheers, lads. We've got Steve, who's always here and is our encyclopedia of football. Basically. Is this just what, like, instead of my Twitter handle now, that's just going to be at the end of, like, the end of my name now when you put it up in the video? Yeah, so we're going to have a different random name for me being knowledgeable about football. football yeah. And we'll just put the, the, the subtitles every time you say thing or thinking. Yeah? Yeah. I'd, well, like you to, I'd like the first one to be the salmon of football knowledge with football in brackets, but... Okay. Yeah, cheers. Okay, well, back to the task at hand. <laughs> we're going to talk about Bournemouth. Not too much action. They have made three signings. We'll talk about, obviously, the most ex expensive signing, um, Nathan Ake. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, you know... He went on loan for them for the first half of the season. Done very well. I'm pretty sure he scored a late dramatic winner against Liverpool. Yeah, it? Well, yeah, definitely yeah. against Liverpool. Can get in there. I remember um, watching it in a local pub to hear with Josh and Josh not being too pleased. But... Sorry, Josh. I think it was Josh, anyway. Probably was. It was a salty Liverpool fan. Yeah, there was, <laughs> was a lot of them. But anyway, um, yeah, I think it showed while he was there... Um, he was very good uh, defensively and he was more of a rock. Like You'd seen when he left the amount of goals that Bournemouth were leaking and he just they didn't look the same unit uh, without him. And yeah. he spoke volumes to the fact that Conte took him back. I know he didn't really play him that much. It was very hard down the second half of the season for him to play. Even you look at Kurt Zuma or John Terry. John Terry obviously getting on in years, but an exceptional defender and has never relied on his pace, has always, rel always relied on his football intelligence. And Kurt Zuma, he was just, a, he's a cracking athlete, and he's actually a very good footballer as well with the ball at his feet. And even those lads couldn't get in, and they'd been at the club all season. So it was just, I think, impenetrable, impenetrable to try and break up Cahill, Louise, and Aspilicueta. Cahill. Um, what? Cahill. Yeah, Cahill. It's Cahill. Oh, I'm not getting two to one here on Cahill. I'm in Dublin now, though. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tom. <laughs> Uh, you're the first yeah, person we have to have really Tony on more often. Yeah. Yeah. He speaks sense. Yeah. Um, How do you feel about it, Tony? Um, well, you have to, as you guys have alluded to there, you have to say, you have to look at the second half of the season, really. Um, because if you look at where they finished in the division, if they, they now have them, obviously they've, they've signed them permanently now and they're going to have them for the full season. So if you look at where they finished, they were ninth last year, um, just outside of those two, kind of, if you were to take the top six, the big six, and as they probably are now. Um, seven, seven. If you count everything, yeah. Um, Did anyone even finish that? Yeah, and then if, if you would have <laughs> finished that even without Lukaku, go yeah. on, Tony. So think. no, if it, I think that like there's that there's that batch of six, obviously at the top of the division, and then you've got the likes of Everton and Southampton, and then teams that are kind of milling around for that next kind of little group of clubs that are trying to break into the top six. If Bournemouth are to try and kind of succeed that, or succeed and get up there, they're going to need a player like him. Apparently, yeah. because their form did dip off towards the second half of the season, it has to be said. And obviously, he played very well when he when he moved um, back to Chelsea, got himself a Premier League medal and that. So, um, yeah, massive signing for them. I thought he was a little bit on the expensive side myself, but yeah, he's this, young. in this day and age, yeah. the transfer market, it's not great. Really, yeah, I mean, it, what people are saying, um, look, thirty million is the new ten million. So I suppose yeah. if you're spending twenty million on a fellow that came at twenty years of age, you're doing all right. I think, yeah, Maybe. yeah. Uh, I think AK has... So did we cut you off before that? See, I think no. we did with the whole no. Cahill, Cahill thing. No, Go on, fine, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I think AK is kind of... That first half of the season for Bournemouth, he he started the season outside of the team, then a, three or four games in, kind of came into the side and just kept his place from then on. He's he's very good with the ball at his feet. He's left-footed as well, which kind of helps that Bournemouth defence. They play with a lot of right-footed central defenders. Um, and they haven't really had a left-footed one since this Dan left. Yeah. So they've now kind of got Steve Cook, who's that leader at centre half, or even Simon Francis to come in there as well, and Ake to play on the left side of it. He gives them pace. He gives them quality on the ball. He seems to be quite a leader himself. He's very vocal at the back. And he's a crack and so he's a full international for the Netherlands as well. I think he's a crack and signing for them. He was the most vital signing they were going to make this summer, regardless yeah. of if the foe came in or not. Josh King kind of scored goals from last season anyway, so. They weren't as much wanting in that position as they would have been without Ake. I think they hadn't assigned Ake this summer and hadn't really replaced him and just kind of gone what they had the second half of last season. We're looking at Bournemouth as kind of relegation candidates and one of the teams who are definitely going to be down there. But Ake coming in, 
I think he's actually that good and has that much potential that he could probably give them that extra six to nine points to just kind of keep them safe in the division and kind of push them more up to where mm. you're kind of talking about trying to break into that top six, seven. They, I don't think they have a hope of doing that. They no, might, I don't. I don't think their stadium and their infrastructure eight, is big eight, enough for it. I mean, they're, they're punching above their weight, but fair play to them. I like them as a club and, you know, I do like the uh, underdog story. I like to see them do well. But uh, we'll move on anyway to uh, Defoe as uh, obviously... Yeah, he was a free transfer, but he's uh, probably, you know, the biggest transfer. Coming back as well. Yeah. So he kind of, pretty much, he, his career kind of started at Bournemouth as such. Yeah. Now he was on the oh, own yeah. from West Ham, but you see the pictures of him back then, he's a little slightly kid and scored a few goals for Bournemouth when he was down there on loan. And kind so of that's where back. he made his name, kind of, yeah. to, to get in the West Ham team. Yeah, exactly. He came back to West Ham and then he was given a chance in the West Ham team off the back of his performance as a Bournemouth. Yeah. Um, he he's a good signing. He scores. He scores. You, he'll score you ten or fifteen goals next season, and that's adding that to a Bournemouth side that already has Josh King, has Callum, Callum Wilson. Wilson coming back from his second knee injury in two years. I think if they had a gone with just King and Wilson, you're kind of going. If Wilson stays fit, great. But is Wilson just a lesser, lesser, younger Danny Sturridge at this point? What about uh, Benek Fobi? I know there's like, talk of him going at the door, but. If he, st- if he stays, I mean, he's he, he's not the greatest striker in the world, but he's all right. Like. Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, he got six goals last year. I mean, if you compare him to the amount of goals the foe got for Sunderland, if he's going to convert that form to, to Bournemouth. And, um, yeah, like for me, I, I think a phobia, I don't know if there's going to be room for him in the squad this year. He's been linked to Wolves. Um, he came out today and said that he wasn't going, but... Wants to fight for his place, yeah. Yeah. Probably because he doesn't speak <coughs> Portuguese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I tell you, I tell you what. Um, as we were speaking off air, you said that he, I think he's he's, a well odds on or something to go. To, yeah, he's now to move. I think isn't he? It's today. It kind of came. He only actually really appeared on Sky Bet today, mm. where they have kind of the list of maybe seventy or eighty players, who are potential transfers this summer and the likelihood of them going based on odds. And he's now two to five to join Wolves on a or Wolves before the end of the transfer window, so I think he's kind of nailed on to join Wolves and he scored goals for Wolves before and kind of moving down to that Championship level league is best for him because if Wilson's fit, the foe's fit, and King's fit, he maybe doesn't even make the bench. Yeah. And I don't think at this stage of his career that's the best route for him. He needs to be playing football. He's got six goals it in the Premier League. Should be challenged to push to the foe out of the team. Yeah, but I think even if you had to go on loan to Wolves for a season, the foul's only going to be at Bournemouth for a year or two. He's got a three-year contract, though. Yeah, but. he's going to be there for a year or two. Let's be fair, he's 34, 35. I, no, I agree. I'm just saying that's the length of time the contract was. Um, I just feel a uh, phobia. I think he's I think he's decent enough. Like, he, like I know we'll six goals, but how many so goals? Were, were, like, how many times did he start? You'd wonder. Yeah, um, that's a fair point. I mean, um, the only thing, you, as we, we said off air as well, is that Defoe... Is he's not going to play thirty eight games this year, is he? Yeah. Uh, like the, himself and King up top are going to be probably going to work really well together. Yeah. Because as you were saying, King will kind of almost played like a number ten last year rather than yeah. a, a, an out and out striker. So, um, you know, a phobia would probably get his chances, but will there be enough chances there for him to, for him to hang around for a year? I'm not so sure. Um, he'll probably play every week for Wolves, won't he? Um, a far away show, yeah, like because Andy Voyman has just left mm. Wolves and gone back to Derby. He was on loan at Wolves second half of last season. He's gone back to Derby. Um, the Icelandic striker they have is apparently on his way to Germany as well. So it's kind of opening up a couple of spaces. They're talking and bringing in a guy on loan from Porto or Benfica or something like that because Jorge Mendes is there and yeah. he's just going to bring in half the Portuguese league on loan for the season. Um, but I think if Albay will play games at Wolves, he knows the culture at Wolves. I know it's kind of changed now, and you know, Spirito Santo in charge as well. But he's at that level. <laughs> at that level, he does score goals. He's proven that before. He scores goals. So for him, I think it's actually the ideal move rather than sitting on the bench and maybe starting five, ten games next season. Yeah. I mean, it got down to someone like Sunderland. They probably need a striker to kind of get them back up in the Premier League. They need more than that, I think. Yeah. I think they'll need a striker and 23 shots. Okay, well, kind of pretty, in how, many goal, how many goals do you foresee uh, Defoe get next season? Um, I think if he got into double figures, he'd be doing very well. Well, yeah. I mean, if you can pick up a fella for free who's going to get you more than 10 goals a season, that's 
that's all you want, isn't it? Like that's you look perfect. at the impact that Ibrahimovic had on the free yeah. for United, and the foul can have a similar impact for Bournemouth. Obviously, at a different area of the table and in a different way, but someone coming in and Ibrahimovic to have a proper impact at United last year needed kind of twenty five goals. Whereas Defoe comes in and scores 10 to put that alongside King. And you're kind of laughing with Bournemouth then if King gets over 10 goals as well. Suddenly you've... If a team like that have 20-25 goals between them in their front two next season, they're going to be pretty safe. Yeah, and hopefully they if they, they could hopefully strike up a, a decent partnership anyway. Yeah. Move on to Conor Mahoney. Or Mahoney. you can call him Mahoney because you're... <coughs> British man, but um, well, no, he's got two ends in his name. He's got an E towards the end of Mahoney. So, if it was an O, we'd have to say Mahoney. But it was an E. Well, they were, we're in Ireland, so I mean, you you're in England. They call him Cahill. We call him Cahill here, but <laughs> yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, I honestly, I've never seen him play. Um, um you've I'll go. I'll let you yeah. go first on the scene as you've seen him play against Newcastle and had bad experiences of yeah. watching him play against Newcastle. Yeah, I just saw him at St James's Park. Yeah, um, we were only just saying off air as well that he uh, Blackburn did the double over Newcastle last year, which was uh, kind of heartbreaking considering they were so poor. Um, but yeah, he looked like their standout player anyway. Definitely, um, he was he he looked strong. He, like he just looked like he had a bit about him. He was definitely yeah. good, definitely really confident on the ball. And, Again, maybe it could have been because they were such a poor side and he stood out, but at the same time, you know, for, again, free. And England under-20 international, if you're getting a fellow like that for free, they've done some, like, that's a shrewd bit of business for me, you know. Yeah, like, I, from what I've seen of them, and in particular, I think it might have been the last game of the season where they went down, but they played quite well. Um, mm. He played very well in that game, and he played very well in a couple other games. I've seen he looks quite direct, but can also do... The fancier stuff, I guess, of kind of coming in and finding little pockets of space, and um, I think he's got a lot of potential. It's I feel better for him for the step up that, as it says here, he's going to join the development squad in the under twenty threes. I think a few months down there with Steve Fletcher and stuff will kind of do him good, and then step up to the first team, then maybe the second half of the season, and um, because there's definitely a gap in that. Bournemouth a team for a winger like him in the long term because they've kind of been playing with Junior Stanislas and yeah. Frazier and stuff like that who aren't really your top level players. I don't think they should have let Matt Ritchie go to Newcastle for instance at all. Right, I think that yeah. was an absolute yeah. mistake but plenty of teams unfortunately have let Matt Ritchie go mm-hmm. for far less money and yeah. not got him back. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think Mahoney's a good sign in the long term for them and I'm grateful from a Portsman sense that he's not stayed at Blackburn because he would have been the one player I would have feared next year in League One because he has bags of quality. Okay. Um and then just kinda of, there's not that much to talk about but uh with regarding Bournemouth. Um but like areas in t- in which you kinda of think they need to strike and or strengthen. Uh, obviously they have uh their strike force, they look like they've got enough firepower. The other one we've missed here and I don't think he's on the list, Azmir Begovic has joined Bournemouth, hasn't he? He's joined Bournemouth on a permanent deal from Chelsea. Since when? Was he? Very early in the transfer window, he joined Chelsea because Chelsea have signed Willie Caballero to replace him. It's completely slipped my mind until right now as we're live on the video. But yeah, Asmir Begovic okay. has definitely joined Bournemouth. He's rejoined them because he was actually on loan from Portsmouth at them as a youngster. And I've read actually, I did read definitely that he had rejoined them for, I think it was about 10, 15 million. That's a good sign. So um, that would have been before that jogged my memory. Um, I would have said goalkeeper, but with Begovic and Gal Begovic is one of the top ten goalkeepers in the league. Yeah, yeah but I just didn't think he's that good. I mean, when he filled in a lot of the times for Chelsea for Courtois, he he never really he never really made any big saves or anything to go. Oh, you know, this guy's a top keeper. He's good at Stoke. I give him that. He's a top. He's for me. I. I watched them basically take David James' spot with Portsmouth when James was in the prime of his career and Begovic was only 21, 22, young kid had come over from Bosnia by way of Canada and stuff and came over through our youth system, went on loan to Bournemouth for a while and then came into the first team and he was absolutely outstanding for us until he went to Stoke. Then he was really good at Stoke as well, earned his move to Chelsea and I don't think it quite worked out from a Chelsea but... I'd also attribute that to he's probably not a second choice goalkeeper. I think it takes a special 
kind of mentality to be a second choice goalkeeper at a club and I don't think he has that in them I think he has a drive to be first choice goalkeeper and he probably lost a lot of motivation at Chelsea because he knew he was never going to get in ahead of Courtois because Courtois is Chelsea's golden goose and goal and he wasn't he's experienced in leagues and stuff like that as well obviously yeah. Atletico and then Chelsea and stuff yeah yeah, I, I, I kind of disagree. I, I can't have him for ten or fifteen million. If, if that's what they've paid for him, I think that's mad money for for him. I think his distribution's a bit dodgy, and he's a little bit iffy from kind of crosses and that kind. Of, he's prone to he lo- yeah. likes a mistake. I just think that mm, for ten or fifteen million—that's a lot of money for him. Yeah. I think he's a good shot. I think he's a really good shot stopper. And mm. when you're a team further down the league, I actually think in Jordan Pickford, who obviously has great distribution. But at times looked a little bit wayward with it at the start of last season, especially he kind of grew into it. Shot stopping is the most important attribute attribute that a goalkeeper needs at that area or in that area of the league. Yeah. You need to be able to keep the ball out of the goal and your defenders aren't doing their job right. Hmm. And I think he's vital with that and his his shot stopping and his kind of his athleticism and he I've seen him for Portsmouth as well when he was younger tipping shots out of the top corner where it you just goalkeepers shouldn't get near them. David James way. wouldn't have got near them. Yeah, mm. he's. I think he's a very good keeper, and I think actually the last couple of years at Chelsea have kind of tainted people's opinion of him because he didn't push Courtois at any point and didn't really look that impressive when he came in. I think mm. Chelsea was the wrong move for him at the time. I think he'll probably say that himself at this point that it was the wrong move for him at the time and the wrong move for his career. And I think this will be a resurgence for him in his career. I think he's a great sign, and Eddie Howe knows him. I don't think this can go wrong for them. He's an upgrade on Boric or Federici. Yeah, and do you think? Um, I think uh, centre midfield is kind of an area they need to strengthen. Obviously, Wiltshire has gone out the door. Mm. Um, he had that injury. Um, do you think they'll get someone kind of in, kind of of his cre- uh, creative kind of mould? Obviously, you have Harry Arthur, and we obviously are a big fan of him. You know, Andy Sherman is there as well. Yeah. He's not yeah. bad, but he's same. not great either. Yeah, I think if they need to, if they want to kick on, that's that's definitely an area that they need to strengthen. And like Harry Arthur, he another like he's a super player. Obviously, we know him quite well. But again, you get the impression with him that he's kind of almost punching above his weight, like the rest of them at, at Bournemouth. He yeah. he's a smashing player, and he but it, he does a lot of things that. Um, he could do with someone else in there helping him with. You know, yeah. he almost carries the team. If you look at the stats from last season, he was by miles their their busiest midfielder mm. with tackles, passing, even shots on on goal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Only King had more shots on goal than him last season, I think, for Bournemouth. So, you know, if they had another player in there doing the donkey work, then you could free up Arthur to do the things that we know he's good at, you know, on the ball. Yeah. And I mean even his tackling was the highest at the club I think last year, which is madness for a player in this position, you know. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I think they could do with strength in there. But I'm, from reading into Eddie Howe's comments the last few days, he's saying that their business is pretty much done, which well, is quite interesting. I thought. For me, I think they actually already have the player at the club who is going to hmm. strengthen that midfield from that Lewis Cup, who they brought in last summer from Leeds for yeah. fifteen million. Mm, Didn't easy. play a hell of a lot last year, but people forget he was only nineteen. He's just yeah. gone twenty. He just captain England to the under twenties World Cup yeah, in South Korea playing, as well. He yeah. was. Solanke got player of the tournament, but from anyone I think who watched any of England's games and that Lewis Cook's player of the tournament, he was absolutely phenomenal for them in midfield. His passing distribution is brilliant, he's a good tackler, his positioning is perfect for a central midfielder. Yeah. Especially in a two in kind of a four four two, the way that Borma play it with kind of King dropping yeah. deep or whatever, but on its base of four four two, he's perfect for that to go up and down but also provide Arthur the protection that he needs to be able to pass the ball in the more advanced areas. I think giving Cook more game time is actually a better plan than going out and maybe Boy, either spending yeah. another fifteen million on another midfielder who's either not proven or hasn't cut it at another club. Mm. Um, the one player who <clears throat> he's not really in the ilk of what Bournemouth do, and a lot of Ireland fans will snap at me for saying it. I think a depth player and a player who he looks like he's going elsewhere, but a player who, if Bournemouth could get their hands on him, would. I think for them be a good sign and to be about that squad and play games would be Glenn Whelan. Right, yeah, I think Glenn Whelan would actually be perfect for Bournemouth as a player to not come in and be a first choice, but for a player to come do in, a job. do a job and kind of teach teach someone like Lewis Cook the ropes of the Premier League. People forget Glenn Whelan's been in the Premier League and played consistently for the last 10 years. So they love him at Stoke. Yeah. yeah. He's a legend yeah. at Stoke. Yeah. Burnley, so fan, Walters, Burnley yeah. fans are excited about getting him as well if he was to go yeah. there. 
Burnley are going to essentially have the Ireland team yeah. uh, at the, the end of the season. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately we've got Brady. We're going to get Brady on that though, aren't we? We might have to wait and get Glenn Whelan on it. Can <laughs> we not get long on the back of it? No. Um, It'll take too long. Oh. Yeah, I think I think Lewis Cook is probably the player who Eddie Howe anyway will look to strengthen his central midfield. Okay. Way. If there was anybody that you could say Lewis Cook gets injured in the first game of the season, who would you get in to to fill that void? Is um, is there anyone um, that you could think of that realistically Bournemouth could solve? Realistically, in, Bour- in Bournemouth's wheelhouse and the money that they have and, and the, type of, Hitchell, yeah, the yeah. type of club they it's have, I think anyway. Tom Kearney from Fulham. I know he's just signed a new contract there, but still, 15 or so million is going to get Tom Kearney away from Fulham. Oh, and no, I don't. I, they wouldn't let him go at Christmas for 20 to Newcastle. Yeah, well, which is, um, I think that's because I think that's because he was able, or they were basically able to convince mm. him that, look, we can get yeah. up. So I think they've got a full year in the championship, and I think if a Premier League mm. club now came in with fifteen, maybe even twenty million for Kenny, um, I think he'd have to go. Yeah. Fulham would have to take that money yeah. for him at that point. They could strengthen their squad with five or six more players with that mm. money, mm. um, and I think Kenny would suit the Premier League well. He'd suit for the system well, and their style of play. I think he'd be a really good signing for them as well. He's still young, English player, a lot of quality about him. Scored a lot of goals last season for Fulham. Was their best player. I he ticks all the boxes as far as Bournemouth are concerned. Okay. Um, I don't think there's much more kind of to, to talk about Bournemouth. We're kind of struggling here a little bit. Um, well, I, on just one point that I was kind of thinking about beforehand, um, Eddie Howe himself. I mean, this is a massive season for him. I think since they, they came up and they finished 16th, um, they were 9th last year. I think we kind of agree maybe they're punching above their weight. I mean, if they they need to progress again, or else he's probably gonna hit, hit the road because for he'll probably have brought them as far as he can bring them, will he? I yeah. Mean, because th- he'll he'd be in demand as well. There's gonna yeah. be clubs that are gonna, gonna have vacancies for him. I would have thought. I think originally, I think when you're saying hit the road to begin with, those will be like, oh god, they're gonna sack him. Bournemouth. No, I don't think no. we'll ever sack Eddie Howe. I think Eddie no, Howe will no. move on and outgrow Bournemouth. I think mm. a job that would tempt Howe at this point, although I don't know if he'd want to work under the kind of structure that they have up there no (laughs) no he he played for Portsmouth for too long he'd never go there Um, I think Newcastle if Benitez Mm. was to go um, I don't know if the kind of culture up there would suit him but I think the size of club would be a massive step up from Mm. Newcastle even as cynical as it sounds and as bad as it sounds for Bournemouth fans if Chris Uton went south um, with Brighton I think how would suit Brighton down to the ground as well and now they're apparently rivals, but I think this our born our Brighton are that next step up in terms of the size of the club, the stadium, the infrastructure they have, the money they have. Obviously, Bournemouth have money, but Brighton have more money. They have a bigger stadium. They probably have more pull. They're closer to London, and um, for a lot of players, I think he could outgrow them and go to even a club like that. Rather than may rather than in the past where he's been linked with like the Everton job and the Liverpool job and the Arsenal job mm. and all of that, I don't think mm. that would be the right move for him. I don't think he's the type of character to move to that level yes. right now. He needs to take one step instead of taking two steps and falling back down to like David Moyes. Yeah, um, I think the only job he's going to leave for is the England job. I don't see him going for anybody else in the league. Like who else can he join? Like I don't see him do well at Newcastle. Brighton is a step down. I don't think um, Brighton, I don't think in the long term Brighton's a step down. I do. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think that he could well. I think it, it it's quite likely that he will be finished up at the end of the season that he'll walk because I can't see them finishing higher than ninth on unless they invest again because you see Everton are investing Southampton. Like you get the West Ham, Crystal Palace are probably gonna. West buy. Ham might be a West show. Ham's a show for yeah. them as well. Um, absolutely. Even yeah, I mean yeah, West Ham West would Brom. definitely be a show with the money and the new stadium and stuff like that. West that, Brom after Pulis is nah. another one. West Brom have a lot of money and they they're a big club. I'm not saying they're not. I just think that Pulis is doing a decent job there. That yeah. I don't think. Let's be would to get into it. When we eventually talk about West Brom a few weeks down the road. But let's be fair here. Tony Pulis is a manager who'll keep you safe for forty points and then he goes on holiday. Mm. So they were at, on the beach in so, February. Yeah, at some yeah. point, at some point, West Brom need to step on and step to that next level. I think someone like Howe would suit that really well because there's a good group of players in there as well. Um, I think he'd suit that perfectly as well. There's a lot of jobs that he could go for, but obviously, if things don't go well with Southgate, he's got to be a big option for the England job as well. 
I think it's too soon for him, but I think the FA would look at him quite seriously. Okay. Um, is there anything more you want to talk about regarding performance? Um, other than the fact that I think they'll struggle? No. Yeah, I agree with that, to be honest. I reckon I don't think they'd be relegated, but they'd be in that kind of lower I'd say 11, the 12th. Table. Finish. I'd go 15, 16, 17. I think they might actually I'd be say, down there. Yeah, I'd say 15. If Josh King gets an injury or Josh King gets his head turned or leaves mm-hmm. before the end of the summer transfer window, that's it. But they've got Jermaine. Yeah, but who's going to give him the ball? <laughs> Lewis Cook. Nah, Junior Stanislas, maybe. Oh, yeah. There's Junior Stanislas Tom ruined Kenny. me in fantasy football last year, so I'm, I can't bear any ill will towards the man. He battered me last year, so I'm not having that happen again. Okay. Yeah. I, think <laughs> um, I, think but yeah, I think Josh King is the key for them, though. If Josh King was to leave or get injured, the they're done. Yeah. yeah. Right, well, uh, I think we'll leave it there. I think uh, by the time we get home, uh, Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather will be having their press conference, so I think we'll wrap things up there. So Conor <laughs> McGregor will have knocked Floyd Mayweather out for the first time in four days. Yeah. But uh, no, if there's anyone uh, you feel like we've missed, um, player wise, um, <laughs> except for Begovic, yeah. um, but if you think there's anyone that we've missed uh, that you think um, would like to see sign for Bournemouth or realistically has a chance of signing for him, do leave your comments um, in the section below there and don't forget to subscribe. What's going on? Everyone's watching the videos, but no one's subscribing. So what's going on there? You have to yeah. fix that up. So. Come on, we're just about 200 subscribers. Get us up a little bit. Yeah. Let's start boosting the subscribers. We'll have competitions coming when you get us up to subscribers a little bit. We're holding them back. We have stuff ready to go. <laughs> All right, thanks very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Give us a wave, Tony. Good night, gents. <laughs>